Hi, and welcome to VFX Tutors. I'm Josh, and in this tutorial, we will be creating an image sequence for VFX. Uh, sorry I've not uploaded recently. I've just been really busy at work at the moment, and my computer at home has been broke for a while, so I haven't been able to actually do any tutorials for the last week and a half. But now we'll be ingesting raw footage to be used in a VFX pipeline. This footage also follows with the sword tutorial, and after we've made our image sequence, we'll track the sword into the footage. So, if you haven't got DaVinci Resolve, I, I think you, sh you should definitely get it, because it's one of the best colour grading softwares, and you can also do comping and do all your edits in it as well, and it's, you can get a free version, so that's great. So, we've used this before, when we used our mobile phone footage, and this is what I use for all my image sequences, um, because it's just the best way to do it, and that's just how... Pretty much almost, I would think every sort of VFX company sort of uses this sort of workflow for ingesting uh, footage. So I'm just going to go new folder. And this footage is just called Purge Guy. And you'll know why it's called Purge Guy when you see it. Create. Cool, so now it's opened up a, just this, the DaVinci Resolve. You can see we're already in our cut tab at the bottom. And if you haven't used this before, it's for basic editing and color grading stuff. And what we're doing is it's fairly simple to use, but it's um quite a complex piece of software, especially when you go into quite complex color grading. So I'm just gonna go to media. And basically this is all we're gonna use. We're gonna use our media edit, color, and deliver. And you've got loads of other stuff you can do now, but for this tutorial, we're just gonna keep it really simple. So I'm gonna to go to my media, and this is where we're gonna bring in our footage. So I'm gonna to go to my folder, or if you've downloaded the footage, wherever you put it, I'm just gonna go to DaVinci, and I've got Purge Guy, and we've got Black Magic 4K. This is what it's been filmed on. And you should see in this little thumbnail up here. So all we have to do is click and drag. And now this is in our media pool. And you can see it's just a whole whole cut. And you can see there's just a guy walking in. And it's quite dark. Um, so you want to make sure that you got this on a nice sort of monitor that you can see the sort of true brightness. So all I need to do now is just go to my edit. And you can see up here, we've got our image sequence here, and it's a .dng, because that's what uh, Blackmagic films in, or my one does. I'm just gonna click and drag it over to the timeline, and now we should have it in this window. So, we're also gonna be doing our cut in here as well, and transcoding it to a linear color space, and you can play around with the colors as well if you want. Um, but we're gonna keep it really simple. So, I can just play it, and you can see that we've got a lot of trash in the beginning and then it sort of goes into the shot and there's a scary looking purge guy with the sword that we made in the previous one he whacks and there's a lot of stuff that we don't really need so let's just scrub for our timeline and let's just pick a rough edit oh, which doesn't have the junk we'll just do it up to there for now because don't forget the longer our shots are the more we have to track so at the moment it's like eight seconds so that's quite a lot of tracking but this is a lock off so you don't have to do a camera track which this is just for the object so you can play through So, let's see how long that is. It's quite a large frame range for manual track. Because obviously, like when you look at this, we're going to be object tracking this. And you can already tell that 
we're probably not going to be able to do this in 3D. So this is going to be all have to be manual tracking in Maya. So you're going to learn how to do some animation as well, which is good for because you're going to have like most of the time um, when you're doing object tracks, it's most likely like this. So let's make our cut. So. Let's just pretend we're doing a sword replacement or enhancing it. Or you're going to write a amount and he sort of meets you down the road. So let's just do the whole range. We might not track the whole range. So I've done up to here. So we've got about just over eight seconds. So now the next thing I'm doing, I'm just going to go to my color and what we can do we can go to our project go to clip and you can see we're quite dark here so you have a choice of different generations of shot color sites I like to go with, and this is purely down to your sort of what you want it to sort of look like and you can see the sort of difference it's made now because it's working with the, the black magic color lookup tables. And if you go down to gamma, you can change it to design video, design extended video, or just leave it on black magic 4k film. So this is entirely up to you how you want to do this and what you what you like. But um I'm going to leave mine on Gen 4 design and film. And it's quite dark here because it's supposed to be in sort of like a dark street at night. So let's see if we can bring up. Let's see if we can bring up some of this uh, detail because we were going to write all this out anyway. So let's bring up the gain and definitely we've got. We can bring up the exposure because this is shot in raw. And you can, so if you bring this all the way up, you can see that because we're not, because it's shot in raw, the light is uh, becoming greater from where the, the light sources are. So it's not just going to do a flat sort of exposure all over the top. So you can play around with the exposure and stuff. And just play around with all these, you'll see what it sort of does, like you see the saturation and stuff like that. Everyone knows what that does. And the lift. You don't want to do too much, otherwise it's gonna make it very grey. And also you can change the colour temperature if you want it looking a bit more cooler, a bit more night because at the moment. Color temperature is quite warm. So we can make it a tiny bit cooler because don't forget, we're not going to keep all of this. Let's bring our exposure down again. But you can do all this afterwards. This is just like, let's work on a nice plate. So. And just play around with it. This is not a, a color grading tutorial. It's just let's try and get this uh, plate out so we can track it. So all I've done, I've, I've just brought up the gain slightly. You can see what that does to it. So I'm just bring it back down to 1.8, and I've brought my exposure up slightly, just so I can see a bit more. But you can you can do this after as well. So. Just gonna make it a little bit cooler because there is actually a blue light. You can just about see the highlights here on that. So if I make it a little bit cooler, it kind of shows up a bit more. Cool. And um, yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. That's that's fine. But you can do whatever you want. So our next step is because. I've mentioned this quite a lot, is uh, the linear color space. So when we're rendering stuff, we always want to 
render in sort of similar color spaces and most places now use aces cg and all that sort of stuff this is not also going into color uh color uh grading and science and all that this is just basic stuff so what we need to do is get this into a linear color space so i'm going to right click on my node here to go to LUTs, 3d LUT, vfx io and I want to go to my black magic film. So you've got to linear. Because this isn't shot on black magic, so you've got the 4K to linear. So now when you select this, it's going to go really dark. And that's all we need to do. Because now it's in a linear color space. So if we bring this into Maya, it's going to read it as close to the original color values. And whatever software, it's all going to read it in the same. So you can see we've got some black bars up here which we don't really want it doesn't really matter either because we are gonna probably chop all this guy out and it's just gonna be the guy and probably just on a back street it's not the best green screen it's all it's all i could get at the, at the time um you can get them off amazon pretty quick so i'm just gonna go up to the file and go to my project settings and i go to image scaling Scale and tide, uh, scale full frame with crop. Select save, and now that's just trimmed it off. And we've not got any black bars now. So we've done our cut, we've transcoded it to a linear color space. So now our next step would be to set up our render settings. So we're going to render this out, then we're going to sort of do our camera lineup afterwards to sort of get our sword track in place. So I'm just going to go to my, I'm just going to call it purge guy first, guy pg, this is fg01, no one knows, well, it's a bit of both, we'll just call it bg01, v01, because we're going to have to replace the sword I guess, and then we're also going to replace the background, dot, we'll get browse, Uh, we'll go to plate and we'll click save so now that's going to save into our purge guide plate folder so now we want to go down to the format and you can do this in any format I like to work in EXR because I cannot see it. Where are we? There it is. Because that's just pretty much what everywhere works at. Then I'm going to change my to the full resolution at 4K. And my frame rate is 24. So I'm going to change my color space because this this is just a tag. So when you bring it into like Maya or Nuka, it tags it as Ace's color space. And I go to linear, so it's in ACES CG, AP1, and, and it's a linear gamma. So I'm just going to force DBA to the highest quality and force sizing to the highest quality. So now I'm just going to go to my file. And I'm going to reduce this down to four. And each clip starting at 1001. So now if we just go for our settings and double check them, EXR at HD, Ultra HD, ACES Linear, Force, all to the highest quality, yeah, File, cool, so we're all good and we're ready to render this, so if we just click Add to Render Key, are you sure you want to add a render really? Uh, project settings. Our timeline resolution is at 1080p, so let's put it on there. So that's why it's being a bit funny. So it's, it's the same aspect ratio, but it seems to have not liked that. So I'm just going to click Add to Render Key. 
And doing that has now reset all our settings. <laughs> so let's just do that again. View one dot browse. And we'll go down to change this again. So I forgot that it resets it. Top video, EXR. That's all good. AP1. Go down to linear, because now it's in a linear color space. And we'll just check these. And we're all good here. File, four digits, 1001. So now if we add to render key, it's now gone over and now we just click start render and this will start going through and rendering all our frames off for us cool so that's that done if we uh If we now just go back to our media and we can just refresh this. Plate. We can click and drag that in. And we see we've got a purge guide plate here now. Just click and drag that in. And you can see we're in a linear color space. So if we select it, and now we'll go to our LUTs, 3D LUT, VFX IO, linear to black magic for film, and we have everything back the way it is. And you can go through, because we'll basically the reason why we've done this is we'll do all our work in linear, so everything's in the same color space. So then you can put a final sort of grade on the end, it's whatever you like. So we could try. Different ones, linear to rec seven nine. Ooh, this is quite annoying sometimes. Oh linear. I don't know, seeing a log. Yeah, that's not great. But um Yeah, we're pretty much done. So our next step is just to uh set this all up in in Maya. And yeah, we're pretty much done with creating our image sequence. I uh, hope you've enjoyed this tutorial and hit that like button and subscribe for more like this.